This is going to give you a run through of how to do a one way between subjects and over and a complex between subjects and over in R. I'm going to show you how to get effect sizes, how to do some tests to make sure you meet the assumptions of and over and what to do if you do not meet these assumptions. As usual, there's a few packages that we need to install. Read Excel, the EM means which will produce those estimated marginal means and p values. So we'll do our post hoc tests. The package car will do a Levine's test and an NCV test. And the package SJ stats will give us some effect sizes as well. As usual, you only ever need to install these one time. Once you've installed it in your R, then it's always there. Then you can just simply pull them out of your library. So just going to pull those packages out. So we're ready to go. First thing I'm going to do as well is just um, turn off scientific notation, so options, side pen, 999. This just gives you exact p-values. And then here's the data set. We're going to call our data frame we're going to be using, we're going to call it alcohol. Um, so we just need to use our read Excel command. And again, this is my location. This is where I've got mine in my code book. You will have to obviously change this to wherever you have saved your data set. So I'll just quickly show you run that and then let's have a look at that data set. If we start at this end, this is the dependent variable in our test. And basically what we did, we had our participants come into the lab and we put them into one of two stress conditions. Condition one, where we made them stressed. And condition two is a control condition. So under the stress condition, made them think they were going to have to do karaoke in front of an audience and be judged. In the control condition, we just asked them to do a crossword. And then we looked at how many milliliters of beer they consumed. So the hypothesis is the people who are more stressed, for the stress condition, be more likely to consume beer. Now, we did also measure drinking motives using a questionnaire. So drinking motives is essentially the reason, the predominant reason why people consume alcohol. There's several different ones of these, but we actually were only interested in three, which was drinking for enhancements, drinking to cope with depression, and drinking to cope with anxiety. Three here. So people in condition one, their primary reason for consuming alcohol was for enhancement for the buzz of drinking alcohol. In condition two, the primary reason was to cope with depression. And three, their primary reason was because they drank to cope with anxiety. So what we're going to look at is the influence of drinking motives, as well as stress on the amount of beer our participants consumed. So going to attach that data set now, so it always knows to read that. And now what we can do first is we can tell that we have factors and what they're called. So in programs like SPSS, you label the actual data set in R. You just read in the data and then you tell R what things mean. The first thing is we're going to label our drinking motives. So what we do is you type alcohol, because that's the data frame we're using. And then we extract an element using the dollar symbol. And that's drinking motives, that's the column title. And we tell R that's a factor. So alcohol drinking motive has three levels. And the levels are 1, 2, and 3. And we just write C brackets 1, 2, 3, comma. And then the labels are, so we just match it up. The labels equals C. Enhancements, cope with depression, cope with anxiety. R now knows which of those variables here, the levels, mean what. And it knows this is a factor. And we do exactly the same thing with our stress condition. So alcohol and we extract the stress condition element. We tell it it's a factor. Alcohol stress condition, it's got two levels. And the labels for those levels are stress and control. You run that it doesn't do anything but now R knows that these variables are factors and it knows how they're labeled as well and we can test this so we can just look just type summary alcohol and this gives us a summary of our data set and there you go drinking motive enhancements 60 participants coping with depression 60 participants and coping with anxiety 60 participants stress condition 90 in the stress condition 90 in the control condition because it's a fact there, it doesn't try and give us means and standard deviations or anything else because there's no point because these variables don't have that because they are nominal variables. However, for our dependent variable, you can see it gives us our minimum score. 
gives us the first quartile score, it gives us the median score, it gives us the mean score, the third quartile, and the maximum score. So it just gives us a little summary of our data. So R now has a full understanding of what the variables are. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll just do a simple one-way ANOVA. As described in the lectures, ANOVA is just another type of linear model in which we have factors. It's not actually really a million miles away from doing a linear regression. The first thing we do is we create our linear model. We're going to call our first one just beer one linear model. You can call that anything you like. You don't need to have LM or anything in it. And what is this linear model? So that equals, it's a linear model with our DV, milliliters of beer, then the tilde symbol, milliliters of beer by, then we say as factor, drinking motive. So this creates our linear model. And we're just going to do it simply first. So we're going to see the infant's drinking motives has on the milliliters of beer consumed. So we create our linear model. And then we ask for our, our, our ANOVA results for the linear model. And there we go. We see we got a really nice, simple output. Here are our degrees of freedom, 2, 177. Here is our F statistic, 1.98. And here is our p-value. So we have a non significant effect of drinking motive. We can also ask for an effect size. Because we installed our SJ stats package, we can just ask for eta squared for our model. So we can just run that now. And this is our eta squared, it's our effect size for the model. We could also get a Cohen's F instead. We've got to ask for this one in a bit of a different way. We have to say effect size, two colons, and then we just say Cohen's F for our linear model. So we can do that, and there we go, we get our Cohen's F statistic there as well. We didn't get a significant effect. And we can just say there was no significant effect of motives on beer consumed, and report our F statistic, along with its degrees of freedom, p-value, and in this case I've given the partial eta squared as well. So we don't need to do any postdoc tests. However, I'm just going to briefly show you how to do that. It's a very straightforward thing to do because we have our estimated marginal means package. We want estimated marginal means and we're going to take them from our linear model. And it's a series of pairwise comparisons by drinking motive. So we're going to compare our conditions, do a series of comparisons across the drinking motives. So if you run that, there we go. Here are our contrasts. Condition 1 versus condition 2. So condition 1 is enhancement. Condition 2 is coping with depression. And then we're going to compare condition 1 with condition 3, enhancements with coping with anxiety. And then we're going to compare condition 2 with condition 3. So coping with depression, coping with anxiety. So there are three possible comparisons. Because we didn't get significant ANOVA, they were never going to be significant anyway, really. Now, if you wanted to do some adjustments on it, you can just type adjustments equals Bonferroni. So that gives us a Bonferroni adjustment, and adjustment equals home. You wouldn't be writing these up anyway, because your ANOVA wasn't significant, but it does show you briefly how you can do those things. There is something like, however, that's quite important, and that's homogeneity variance. So we need to test for homogeneity variance. Well, that's easily done. We can just type Levine test, and our model in there. We click on that. And here's our Levine's test. And what matters is just the p-value for our Levine's test. And basically, if your Levine's test is significant, that means you do not have homogeneity of variance. So you've violated that assumption. In this case, we're OK. However, if you did, it's a very simple thing to deal with. You can just do what's called a Welch test instead. To run this, you type one way dot test, dv, tilde, IV, just like before, and you write var equal false. This is our Welch test, and it's got an F statistic. It's got our two degrees of freedom, and it's got its p-value. So you just write up the Welch test in the same way as you would a normal ANOVA, but you tell the reader you've done a Welch test. Let's look at some more complex examples from multifactorial ANOVA. What we're interested in here is the interaction between drinking motors and stress condition the interaction between our two independent variables and how they influence our dependent variable. To compute this, it's really easy because all you need to do is put a star between your two independent variables. So what we've done here, we've created a new linear model, which is called a B2. 
linear model. And this is a linear model. Again, our dependent variable is beer. Tilde symbol. And then as factor drinking motive by as factor stress condition. So this is going to compute our ANOVA and it'll give us a main effect of each variable in isolation as well as the interaction between the two. So we run that and then we ask for our ANOVA. Now this table is a little bit more complicated. We've got our main effect of drinking motive, main effect of stress condition and our interaction between the two. Drinking motive, there's the degrees of freedom for drinking motive, there's its F statistic and its p-value. Stress condition, and for the interaction between the two, degrees of freedom, F statistic, and p-value. If you want to get an S squared for this, there we go. So there's the eta squared, our effect size for each. We could ask for a, for a Cohen's F if we wanted. And there we go. Here's our Cohen's F for each one as well. So we've, we've done our ANOVA and we've got significant effect of stress condition and a significant interaction. Now if you wanted to do estimated marginal means, we probably wouldn't be looking at them for drinking motive here. We probably wouldn't want to do this because we've got no justification for doing it because we don't have a significant main effect. But it's just the same procedure as before, so I've just included it, just so you can see. We just asked for beer 2 linear model, pairwise drinking motive. Now, we could look at our estimated marginal means for stress condition. That was significant. It's not a lot of point doing this, really, because there's only two conditions. So the p-value that's derived from this is going to be the same as the p-value from the ANOVA. So it's just got a highly significant effect. So really, you just need to look at your descriptives to see to see which stress condition consumes the most beer. Now, actually the one that really matters is to look at the interaction. There's different ways that you could set this up. We ask for estimated marginal means taken from our beer two linear model. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the pairwise comparisons between the stress conditions. This is gonna compare stress conditions. Then we put a line in here and say, we're gonna do this separately for the different drinking motives. So what this is essentially going to do, this line here is going to almost split your data into three different groups. And within each drinking motor group, so those who drink for enhancements, it's going to give you a comparison between two stress conditions. And then it's going to look do the same thing for people who drink to cope with anxiety. And then it's going to do the same thing for people who drink to cope with depression. Here's our contrasts. Drinking motive one, that's enhancements. Comparing the two conditions, there's two stress conditions, there's no significant difference. So people who drink for enhancements, they don't drink any more or less beer if they're stressed. Now, as you can see, for the other two conditions, the two coping conditions, we do see that effect. So there is a significant difference between stress condition versus the control condition in people who drink to cope with depression and people who drink to cope with anxiety. Again, if you want more details on the direction of these differences and so on, you would just look at descriptive statistics after that. We could look at our Levine's test as well for our model to make sure we meet those assumptions. So this gives us the Levine's test for that model. You can see it's not significant, so we don't have a problem. It's worth note, no, there's no Welch test for a multifactorial ANOVA. Now, there is another thing that we need to look at, which you'll remember from the lecture, which is heterosedacity. Look at that with the NCV test. Click run. And as you can see, non-significant, so we don't have a problem here either. If this was a problem, then there is a way to deal with that relatively straightforward. This is the command we've already run earlier. This is just what gets us beta 2 linear model, so we rerun that. But once we've done that, our linear model, if we do have this problem here with heterosedacity, then we just type ANOVA, note it's got a capital A, beer 2 linear model, then we type type 2, and then we write white adjust equals true. So that's just a, a white adjusted ANOVA, which deals with that as a problem. You can run that, and there you go. It does this corrected ANOVA, and as you can see, it just gives us the same 
format as before, and it's just written up in the same way. But again, you tell the reader that due to failing the NCV test, that you've run a white adjusted anode, but you just report it as you have before.